to Limit Break, uh, a podcast by FF Radio. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Helk. With us, we have Rindadas and Sixuchi. And guys, it's been a while, so I'm really excited to get going with this. And unfortunately, we had the uh, the pleasure of hitting. Fu- I mean, fortunately. What did I say? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Both. <laughs> Both. I'm going to go with both. Uh, of touching on Final Fantasy 15 today. So we've had plenty of time to digest it. And by the way, uh, spoilers for anybody who hasn't played the game. If you don't want to uh, to hear about any spoilers, uh, turn off this podcast. Come back to it after you've beaten it. And uh, we'll be sure to, uh, you know, enlighten you then. Um of things that you already know. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but, uh, we, we're going to, uh, be discussing Final Fantasy 15 today. I, uh, I don't know what, what version you guys picked up. I bought the deluxe edition, um, with the pretty art on it. Nice. The steel case and yeah. with a movie in it that I already own on Amazon, uh, on demand so you know that's great that i that i forked over the extra money on it so um i guess let's just begin uh with what we've been kind of so we're we're kind of put into this instance in which we're we start the game before king's glaive happens really right we're we're put Mm. into the 15 universe we're we're split off from the city and we're 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 kind of I I appreciate the opening to the game of where uh, you're pushing the car and Stand By Me comes on. That was mm-hmm. that was a, a a pretty good start to the game. I'm not gonna lie that I thought it was funny, but at the same time, why are you making me push a car? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> start the game. Come on, you know that's that's one of those that that's a cutscene. You know, just just make it a cutscene. That's fine. Yeah. I I don't need to be involved, but that's nitpicking. So let's let's take a look at the characters. We wanted to break this down into different areas. So our characters. So our main party, and we're gonna just we're gonna pretty much talk about the main party. So Noctis, Ignis, Gladiolus, and Prompto. Um, what do we think? I I think that someone ripped off the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean see, I mean you've got you've got your your leader in in Noctis slash Leonardo, you've got the guy who's uh, who's you know a badass who's constantly challenging the leader, i.e. Raphael and or Gladio. Mm-hmm. You've got the the intelligent one who's you know trying to make peace with everybody, i.e. Ignis and Donatello, uh, and then you've got the party guy, right? The party dude, Prompto and Michelangelo. So yeah. I, I feel like maybe uh maybe someone drew some inspiration there maybe a little bit, mm-hmm. but you're right. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Scott? Ah, painful, very painful. <laughs> you know, I, oh, go ahead. I mean, I've like I'm a big otaku fan. You know, I'm head over here heels for a Japanese anime and culture life. It just felt like the most mediocre group of individuals you could put together to be honest <laughs> and I love final fantasy don't get me wrong i'm not here to rip on it but i'm just saying i i've seen so many animes that are just so similar with the characteristics of this party you know and i think that that's a great uh I hate to immediately go on, you know, start, you know, slapping this game upside the head right away you know just just right at the gate but Unfortunately, there's a lot of beige color to these guys. You know, I, did they think that giving Gladio an open shirt and tattoos was going to make it? You know, oh, he's awesome. You know, that guy's cool. You know, it's like, it, it, it's just, it's one of the funnier things. And and when, at the end of the day, when you, when you rest and everything, and you're looking at some of the pictures, and it's like, oh, Prompto took a picture of when we were in the middle of the fight. It's like, why the hell are you taking a picture then, Prompto? It's like, you should be shooting that thing in the face instead of taking that picture. Um, no, it, it it's... I want to like them. And I, I don't know. I guess I, I kind of identify myself with Ignis a little bit more than others. Um, 
but I, you know, mostly because I'm not as ripped as Gladio. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things. But we were given kind of this this group, and I don't know if I'm really pumped about them. I think that one of the things that I like about RPGs is that you kind of got to own your group. You got to or earn, not own your group. Um, you know, in, in every RPG, you start off as guy one and maybe one other person. And you go through and you earn the people because you accomplish a feat. Now, I understand you don't have to do the same thing in every RPG, but I didn't feel like I earned any of this group right here. I feel like as playing as Noctis, because that's who they want you to think that you are, um, because that's the person that you're ident- identifying with in this game, which I don't identify at all with because he has, you know, dad issues and is a king or something. You know, it's like, come on, you know, but... <laughs> Being royalty is so hard. Oh my god, it's so hard <laughs> being royalty with the most amazing powers ever divined to any human ever. Sure. <laughs> you know, it it just makes you it, it makes you cringe because you're like this is the guy. This is this is the guy that's going to rule you. This is this is him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who's who's constantly walking into people and saying the most bland things during battle. <laughs> You know, whatever, you know, it's like, oh, man, come on, you know, you're going to be the king and you have to, you know, not be a total douche about it. Um, I feel, I feel like I, I kind of slam Noctis a lot just because he really is a nothing character. He's kind of, he's, he's the, the petulant child. Um, whereas, you know, Gladio is, is, you know, his, uh, his mentor that's all you know like at one point of the game when he kind of like snaps like when he kind of grabs noctis and and kind of gives him a talking to and it's like yeah i mean i want to do that to him too but this isn't gonna (laughs) fix the character i don't feel like i don't feel like he ever gets fixed i don't know um i feel like it's a weak cast i feel like it it out of you, there are so many, so many Final Fantasies that you can look at. I, I think it's, it's an okay cast, but I think it's a weak one. Um, you know, there are, there, are, there's, there's rosters that Final Fantasy has in certain games that are, are forgettable, um, or not, not as memorable as others. Because when you think of Final Fantasy, you know, if I say name a character from a Final Fantasy, people are going to say Cloud or Sephiroth or something like that. I'm. I would probably never say Noctis um, or Gladiolus or Ignis or Prompto. Um, and that's, that's, that's bad on, on their side. Now, I, I, I feel like because I didn't earn the characters, maybe, maybe I don't appreciate them as much because they're just there all the time. And they were there from the beginning. They're there with your car. They're there to, you know, to make you food, to, uh, train you to do all of that i don't know maybe i'm being a little bit too hard right out the get-go but i think that they kind of deserve it what do you guys think no i would agree that it is it is you know it's a little different um than some of the other rpgs where you do acquire characters along the way and they a lot of times add something Mm -hmm. it which you know, is kind of a, a spin on what you've been doing for the past 10 hours. Now you get a new character who's going to add something new to that, keeps it fresh. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree that it is a little, it's a little awkward to do that and just, okay, this is the four, you've got them from the beginning, this is what it is. That being said, I mean, I, I thought that they did okay with their their relationships with each other. I thought that was an interesting point. I thought it. I thought it worked okay, uh, and I think maybe that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it was again kind of like you're saying. It's okay. It wasn't the best one ever, um, but it, it, but it was only okay. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ignis, same thing. Ignis was my favorite mm-hmm. uh, throughout. Uh, just and again, you know the whole spoiler thing. Even after the the blinding yep. situation, 
he became even more my favorite character. Yep. Uh, uh, again, that part where Noctis and Gladio were bumping heads and Ignis is like, hey guys, seriously, shut up. Yep. <laughs> you know, this isn't helping. Let's, you know, I'm fine. Let's just go. Yep. And you know, I was, you know, cheering Ignis on at that point. Like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Um, and then Prompto started, for at least for me, being super annoying. And yes. I'm going, oh God, I'm going to have to spend 40 hours with this guy. <laughs> and I, I don't know. But actually, after a while, um, he grew on me, and he was kind of like a, kind of like a little brother type guy. I wanted to, you know, give him a noogie or something, um, and, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you little crazy so and so." So yeah, it, you know, him uh, humming the victory fanfare after a fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> first time that happened, I you know I thought that was great. Um, or him so you know, the chocobo I, song. You yes, like that? the yeah. chocobo song. <laughs> yes, that was that was great. And and he, like I said, he kind of grew on me. Gladio, I never really related to, and I most definitely didn't relate to, to Noctis. It, I mean, it was like, oh man, it's so tough being royal and powerful and popular and great. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, man, I, I'm sure it is. I, I don't know <laughs> anything about that. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, the, that, but yeah, yeah, that's that's a hard hard character to to make you identify with, I feel, just as right. a whole. If you're going to make that guy a main character, ooh, yeah, that's that's tough. I, I Because most people don't identify with that type of character. Most people are buying this for escapism. And, yeah. <laughs> but, they, but at the same time, they want that escapism to be tied to them. They want to identify themselves with somebody. Um, that's why we play games, because we identify with someone. You know, maybe there was a, a situation, and, and that's not the only reason why we play games. We play games for a challenge, you know, blah, 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 yeah. blah, you know, blah, 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 you know, you know, that's not the only reason we play games, Hulk, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we, you know, to make that guy, you know, if it, I identify with uh, what's his face from Kingsglaive more than I identify with Noctis with uh, uh, Aaron Paul's Nick. character than you know than Noctis just because you know he's some schmo that just you know was you know that was a refugee and was given powers by the king and blah 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 you know that that's a care you know Kingsglaive wasn't great and we've been over that and we've beaten that one but I feel like the characters were more identifiable whereas when you're given Noctis it's like okay great. You're cool, I guess. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> Sounds like fifty-fifty. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I it's, like you said, some you know, Prompto does grow on you a little bit, but I, you know, I, he isn't he isn't my vanilla. Believe me, because if I could ever just throw somebody down into a well, it was vanilla. Um, <laughs> just just overall, just voice delivery and everything. You know, I. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so I wouldn't say I was annoyed by anyone I was just underwhelmed so yeah. I wouldn't say it was a strength of the game I would say that it was a it was there it, you know the characters were there you were given some some uh, okay design I mean okay designs and okay this is this is what they decided for the story okay these are your characters great Let's uh, let's bro up. We lost Scott, but we'll get him back in a moment. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can. Uh, that just wrecked everything. Um, but we'll see what what can happen. So when he comes back. So. Well, one thing that I had thought too was with the guest characters that you that you get. Yep. I thought that w would have been a great opportunity to really kind of almost replace, if you will, mm -hmm. that, you know, we acquire characters as we go on through the game. Yeah. So you can use these guest characters to kind of, you know, shake things up and, and, and fill that same role. Yeah. Except for that, I just didn't think that they utilized them nearly to the extent no. that they should have. They most definitely didn't. I, I think that that can be an okay thing. And, of course, this is messing with our stream. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, because I have everything tied to screen position right now, so that's that's really cool. So, you know what I'll do is I'll kind of I'll see if I can keep on getting Scott. Um, but I I just underwhelmed. Oh well, what are you gonna do? You know, uh, 
we'll we'll keep on. You know, it's it's a it is what it is. So, um, I think we've kind of beaten the characters into the ground a little bit. So, and <laughs> while we while we wait for for Scott to back on, what do you think? Of, I one cool thing that I thought one one positive. Um, I think that the the game is beautiful. I think it's a beautiful game. I think that that works in its favor. Um, yes. I think that that's the that's probably one of the really great things mm-hmm. about this game. Um, visually, I think that I I could I could look at this game all day, um, without without getting bored. Um, I sure. thought that I thought that if you're going to make open world, you have to make it feel just crazy big and that's gonna be that and i think they succeeded in that now i think that the open world almost worked against them a little bit though because the world felt a little bit like this takes forever to get to anything like to drive somewhere like it was like oh it's three miles down the road and it would take like seven minutes right and so you're sitting there and you're like this sucks you know i'm (laughs) I'm just looking you're looking around but at the same time you know there were times where i would go Okay, I'm driving there, and I'd put the controller down and just kind of do something else while I'm while I'm doing that, or you know, look at grades or something like that. Right. Um, I think that I think we're getting Scott back now. So good, good. Scott's back. Scott's back. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, cool. That was cool. <laughs> I can I can, I can hear myself. I can hear myself. How are we doing here, Scott? Are we back? Are you, are you back? Yeah, that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Laptop just restarted in the middle of that, and I'm using oh. the other one now. So, okay. my apologies, guys. That's fine. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm making it. We're on to how the game looks and kind of the open world area. We kind of, I think we beat beat up the characters enough. Um, yeah. Don't take them down too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to tear them apart. Um, you know. I think that the uh, what is it? So, so I was discussing. World is beautiful, very realized, but it's also the open world works against you because when you drive somewhere, it takes forever to get there, or it took forever to get somewhere. And there was ground. You know, one of the things that I like about open world games is typically if there's like a mountain or there's some rocks, you can typically climb the rocks. Can't do that. Nope, can't, magical can't do that. barrier. Nope, magical barrier, just right. just right there, and nope. you know, just and and it's a complaint, and it's a small one, but at times it was like, okay, I got to go all the way over, I got to do all of this, you know, and I understand you don't want your character climbing, you know, if they don't want that physics to work, okay, that's fine, but at the same time, it there were times where I would be like, okay, I think we're getting there. And then I'd walk in a different direction and it's like, it's not, it's not working out for me. You know, I don't know. And no, I, I completely agree with that. I, um, I had started just the past couple of days kind of playing around with 15 again, kind of getting back in the feel of it for, yep. uh, for coming on today. And I had just finished a couple of days ago, breath of the wild. Mm hmm. And I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys have had a chance to play that at all. Yeah. Um, it's good. Big, big open world. And, yeah, you can climb just about everything. And, yeah, it, coming from that to uh, 15 and, you know, trying to get to a point on the marker and running up to a mountain going, oh, come on. Yep. <laughs> I seriously got to run all the way around? Yeah. yeah. Like, like Gladio like, can, can yeah. climb this. Look how buff he is. Yeah, I mean, he should be able to just, like, throw the mountain out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not a you problem. Know, why would he not be able to? <laughs> and, and I do agree about the it's taking a while to, to get places in the car. I, I think they did some of the the banter between the four of them occasionally while you were in the car. Yep. I think maybe that would have been an opportunity to, to do that a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, and kind of make those longer trips, you know, have something going. Yeah. I did. I did like to, you know, in those long car rides, would you know, pan the camera around and just look at the, yeah. the world. It was, like you said, absolutely gorgeous. Yep. Uh, just very well done visually, and I, I think we can all pretty much agree that um, 
you know, Square Enix hasn't had a problem with that. Yes. The, nope. you know, the past few games. They're, they're pretty good at that one. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I also liked the, you know, the radio part yeah. that you could do, um, you know, and, and that kind of helped with the traveling. I remember you know, finally getting the, um, the soundtrack to Final Fantasy XI yep. and going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yep. What year is it? This is awesome. I this 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 feeling of nostalgia came yep. over uh, on this long road trip to wherever I was going. Yep. Um, so there were a couple of things that that could save you, especially the first few long trips. But once you did it several times, it did become kind of tedious, and I started finding myself more likely to do the whole fast I'll travel. pay the yeah. pay the guild to fast, to fast travel. travel. Yep. Yeah, no, um, totally. So that was, it, it's, it's a, it's a week. It, it, I, I think that like you said, the music and I forgot that and I was going to hit music later. So, but this is a great, great time to discuss that. I think that it was a great, great idea to do that, to put classic, uh, classic music on, on the, you know, on the radio too bad. They didn't talk to me. No, uh, anyway. Um, no, could have, <laughs> yeah. could have, come on. You know, but, but you know, when internet leaves my house, you know, suddenly all the gamers don't have radio in their cars. So, you know, that would be a problem with it. Uh, so what anywho, is... um, but it's, yeah, look at that guy. Mine's in the wash. Unfortunately, I, I should have done uh, that. Well, I, I, do like that one, but I got distant worlds going here today. So it's, uh, it's it's one of those see that that shirt is and i think that eventually i'm gonna make a couple or a bunch of uh limit break shirts yes! you know, more, more specific to yeah. the podcast but anyways That'd enough awesome. enough enough self-promotion <laughs> jesus um <laughs> so i think that i i like i like the idea of like you said being able to look because vistas 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 you know it's breath of the wild is great for that um it, and this game is beautiful beautiful for that um, and the, the image, the, the, the picture taking and everything is really cool. It's really nice to be able to look around, but, and the banter thing, I would have loved to have, you know, have that be a little bit more integral, but it was just like, there were times where it was just like, all right, just drive there. And then if I had to go somewhere else, fast travel, fast travel, fast travel, you know? So what did you guys feel about, uh, at the end giving, uh, the regalia, it's like around chapter 13, you finally get accessibility to turn the regalia into uh, an airship. But you guys think of that one. Kind of a, I don't know. I think that... Let's, uh, let's dangle a carrot in front of you. No airships till the end of the game. Yeah, I, and, and that's fine because you want... You know, I was I was watching a, a video on, on uh, YouTube, you know... But, fancy that i was watching videos on youtube um right? <laughs> you know and they were talking about how in uh how one of the things that blizzard wants to eliminate in in world of warcraft is flying mounts because they think that because they they don't want you to use them because they want they want their design of the world more. to be great, yep. you know, for you to yep. see the world rather than to just fly through it, I've, you know, yep. hit, hit a hit an auto run key and just walk away and then come back in five minutes and be like, okay, <laughs> land here, you know, yeah. and that's one of those things. I think that I'm okay with that because they want to add an airship in in a game, but they want you to experience the ground and the world because you know, and I I'll I'll, I'll put it like this as a king you should be going through the world and kind of gaining some kind of uh, practical experience yeah you should be you, you know you should be experiencing the land rather than just get in my ship and go over yeah. there and fight the bad guys you know pretty much yeah <laughs> that's that's something that i think well i well i you know it would have made everything easier obviously mm. um you know, the world is, you know, I think that as we, because the world design is a little, you know, it's, it's, it's closer to modern day, you know, you have cars, you have monsters, you have magic, but you have cars and, you know, city, city life is kind of close to what, what you would see in modern day. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it's kind of, kind of cool to be, have to be like, okay, well, I got to go there 
the only way to get there is to take these roads, you know, or I can just, you know, run, I can get on foot and just run through the woods and do that and then fight everything, um, in my way. Um, I think that that was, I think that that's, that's okay. I, I, I'm not going to slam them as hard for that because I think that realizing the world and, and experiencing the world on foot and on, and behind the wheel is important for this game. Even though I hate that it takes so long to get to places. Yeah, <laughs> like fast travel even, most of the time. Even though I hate it, I understand it at right. times. So I think that that's why they they wanted to kind of not give you that until until then. So that's my thought, at least. I don't. Yeah, I could. Uh, I could be wrong. I probably. No, I think you're on point. point. I think you're on point with it. So, but yeah, okay, beautiful game. Uh, world is big. Uh, characters are kind of meh. Uh, I see. So, so okay. Um, we're we're on a good good uh, good path here. What do you think about what do you think about uh, what do you think about the the villains? What do you think about the monsters? What do you think about the baddies? What do you think about all of them? <laughs> I know Jack. Yeah. Um, I I mean I I I I wasn't necessarily kicked in the head by really any of the the beast bad guys they were all i i felt pretty standard fare I, I thought you know a lot of um you know it, the the way to fight them and, and things like that nothing was really too too uh over the top yeah i <sighs> all right over use of an iron go ahead, giant go ahead, <laughs> go ahead i i i don't i spent most of the game just kind of with my with my head sort of cocked to the side whenever he would be on screen, and I I, I think I kind of felt that way all the way through. Like I I don't know what to do with you. I'm not really mad at you. I don't think I'm not angry with you. I don't know that I want to. I don't know that I want to beat you. Yep. So I'm just kind of, you know, just going through the motions here when it comes to him. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, I. It was definitely no. Kefka poisoning his own troops or Sephiroth running your girlfriend through with a sword. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know that I, I felt really a lot to, to, to want to stop him and fight him, if that makes sense. It, it makes complete sense. When you're given it to... You can't... In today's day and age, okay, so we, we know political lines, boundaries, stuff like that, that define our current world. The, you know, I know the U.S., you know, this is Canada, this is Mexico, you know, over here you have all of this, and there's all of that, and there's different political leanings, and there's different mm-hmm. different military responses and everything. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that, you know, there's a lot of gray in in our world, and that's what, there was a lot of gray in this world, where it was like, Okay, yeah, he kind of he's bad, but you know, it's because I'm Noctis that he's bad. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not. And, and I think I think gray is a, is a good thing. I don't. Yeah. I, I think that that's you know that that does work. But I thought, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna hate myself for doing this. Yep. Thirteen two. <laughs> I. Oh, yeah. no. oh no! Oh no! I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Go in there, I'm huh? Yep. <laughs> go, go. Just do it. <laughs> but but Caius, mm-hmm. you know, it, going through his story, and again, spoilers for folks who haven't played that one. Yeah, whatever. That's I, been out for forever. In the end, you know, he was. I thought a, a somewhat sympathetic character. You know, he he was. It was a rough situation for him too. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, even knowing that, I still wanted to beat him. Yep. I wanted to to confront him. If that makes more sense, confront yeah. him. Arden, I just, I don't feel it. I just, I didn't feel it, and I was just kind of, even though it's kind of similar, you know, he's, he, he kind of got screwed over, really. You yep. feel kind of bad for the guy, but I don't, I never felt like I need to confront him. Yeah, yeah, I, uh... I, I feel that entirely, Jack. I, I feel like Arden was one of those uh, villains in a series that 
was aimed to be like a brother for Noctis, you know, two brothers fighting for the throne of the kingdom type stuff. And, and again, guys, big otaku over here. It, it happens a lot. You see these siblings fighting for the inheritance or the, you know, the, the stability of the home or the family. And I don't get me wrong. I, I mean, at first, you know, Arden's just this count, uh, chancellor. He's just some political figure. And then it's like, let's take some uh, Western ideology and just say, OK, he's one of those political figures that talks a good game. And then as soon as he's in power, you know, he betrays you. Right. And I think that was kind of shown with uh, with well, spoiler alert, guys. With uh, Luna Freya being being killed, right? So I don't know. Like, I have mixed thoughts about it. I mean, I, at the end of the whole whole game, when you have that epic battle with Arden, I think they put a lot of CGI. They put a lot of programming and time and effort into that, and I, I really respect that. But we, we've seen this a lot in other games and other series before that just aren't even aff affiliated to Japanese culture, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, it 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 just it it didn't. And come on, you you, you got that um what you, what was her name? That one imperial mercenary like halfway through the game. You know what I mean? Like uh, it felt like Aranea, is that it? Yeah, Aranea, yeah. right. I, yeah. I felt like I it was such, like yeah. it's such a cliche Final Fantasy move to just say, Okay, we're gonna play this game, we're gonna run this game the way we usually do. Oh, but we have no guest parties. We've only got Anea and uh what was it, the general core, I think? Core. Yep. Core, yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I mean I just that kind of like showed lacking to me. It was like, where are my guest characters? Like, where where are the people uh, that keep me attached? Not just these four kind of bumps in the road, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. And uh, we we kind of we touched on that a little bit uh, before you came back on. Um, no, it, it's sure, just... my bad. No, 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 no. How dare you? How dare you disconnect during our podcast? Jesus. I don't <laughs> make me make me have to scramble well, because we're suddenly looking at Jack's mouth in the in the stream and everything. It's like, oh god, dude, awesome. We gotta fix this, you know. Um, but no, 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 it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I, I, I really feel that I, I just don't. Did this story need to be told? Damn. Was, was this a story that was really that was really pressing? You know, I mean, there there are I just I and I hate to hit that at this point of the podcast because there's so much more that I want to talk about, but it's like it's like was it and it, it we'll we'll revisit this at the end because I don't want to I I want to just put that there, but but we we I think that uh I I Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, so, battle system. Uh, what did we think of of this battle system? Um, it was good. Do it we was... see this being a... Now, it, I think that I first started playing this, and I was playing it, and I was like, I hate this fucking battle system so much. <laughs> Damn. I like, because I was like, I'm like, I'm playing it, and I'm just like, and, and I'm getting smoked, you know? And... I not not like not losing but just being like I am having a hard time with this and it's and I'm like and let me I had been playing near Automata a lot before the before going back to the game and I was like this is a good battle system I really I really enjoy near I really enjoy near as a whole uh and that can be a separate podcast if we ever want to touch that because that that was a home run. Um, but I think that, and to go to Final Fantasy 15, which was like, okay, it's not, it's not turn-based. It's well, it's not turn-based, but I was like, I was like, I feel like I'm trying to hit a fly with a baseball bat. Every time I'm like, I'm getting into a fight and I'm like, I have no idea, you know? And then as I kept on playing it and just kept on, you know, just getting more and more pissed off, I, was like I'm gonna hold the square button, and just see what happens, you That's, know. And yep. and and I'm gonna maneuver, but I'm also going to do this. And that was what really started made me go, okay, this isn't bad, um, because then I was like, okay, so I'm making this harder than what I should have been. I'm because I would be like, oh, I gotta hit these things immediately, 
mm. in being the great tactician that I am. Um, you know, I'm just trying to go in there swinging the sword and just being like, yeah, die. And then, you know, and then I get smoked, but I'm like, okay, let's see what happens if I, if I have my dodge and block up most of the time and then parry and then going into an attack. And that, because I'll give the game this, when you land a parry, there is nothing better in that game. It is like, yeah, because feeling. you're like, oh, yes. You are like, you are dead. You know, it's <laughs> like, because it, it, it really, it really makes, makes, makes the game much more. Once you start getting that, the game feels good, I think. The, the, the battle system feels good, at least. So, what's your thoughts, Jack? I, I did, um, it, it didn't take me as long i think to get comfortable with it but i did struggle kind of the same way with the blocking and and dodging and things like that so in the first few battles i was struggling with it yeah. until i um i developed what i dubbed the bitch strategy <laughs> is that <laughs> yeah I, yeah yeah and it, it is really i would warp strike in maybe swing one more time and then warp strike to something hanging above the area. <laughs> you had to and then pick the next too. target and rinse and repeat. <laughs> yeah, just keep doing it like madness. Yes, that's what I would do. Until I, once I got more comfortable with it and I did start to play around with blocking and dodging and parrying and, and all hail link strike. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, I, I quit doing that. Just, you know, would stand my ground and, and uh, use the, uh, the block and everything. But, yep. but yeah, I, I went through the first first bit. Warping in, warping out. Warping in, warping out. <laughs> and wouldn't stand toe to toe. Yep. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. And, um, it, you know, once you get used to it, and and I think the other part of that is to get used to it. Yeah. Because I think this is where we're going. Yeah. I think yeah. this what the remake of Final Fantasy VII is going to look like. I think Final Fantasy XVI is going to look like this. And for the folks who are really hung up on the turn base which i love turn base it's great it's, it's going away it's just yeah. going it's just it, it you know we can we can put a we can start carving that gravestone because <laughs> you want to play that game go play undertale or something like that that's turn base that's that's the way we're going it's not a bad thing it has you know in a classic rpg setting where it wouldn't make sense that's fine but this is the way that Square, because Square definitely wants this, wants to make these games for everyone. And, I mean, just pop in the game right now and see the first screen from Square Enix that they put up. What is it? You know, a Final Fantasy for, for long time everyone. fans and new yeah, people and new, like or something or like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like that. You, I know who you're targeting here, Square. I know who you want to play this <laughs> game. Okay. Exactly. You know, the people like me are going to buy the game. The people, the newcomers are the ones that you're focusing on. So that's mm -hmm. okay. I understand. You want to make money. That's what, that's what you are, you know. And this is where things like World of Final Fantasy come in. Yep. I mean, yeah, that was, you know, we obviously we already discussed that yep. and everything, but th you know, that was a that was a pretty good game, all turn-based. You know, and yep. and um and that's a that's a nice kind of break from the 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 futuristic direction that that they're going. The frantic type of, you know, and sure. I yeah, call it, yeah, I call it frantic, that. but you know, it, it there is because there's a level of franticness, but there's also a level of, you know, okay, I have to approach it like this, you know. Um mm -hmm. So, you know, a battle system's fine, I think. Um, so, what do we think about experience and food buffs? Uh, that that was something you guys had, or did I put that? I don't know who put that. Um, I, I I may have done <coughs> that, but but I thought the experience system was was interesting. But I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's because I go to bed and I get you know after you work out, you go to bed and you get stronger. You know, your yeah, muscles break down. Is that is that what we're we're kind of against with? Yep, reiterate. Yeah, I mean that's that's the kind of idea. And the food buffs I was fine with, and it was always funny because like, because he'd like shout, "I got it!" after yeah. <laughs> after a battle, and I'm like, "What the hell does he have?" I'm like, 
Like, and it's like, oh, and then Gladio would go, I'll taste that for you, you know? Yep. <laughs> I'll no, a, that's a spot-on impression. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, I know. That's, that's... Get Phoenix to contract him. Yeah, I know. Get, yeah. get me a voice acting gig here, guys. There you Come go. On, you know, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> no, the, uh, I thought that, I thought the entire, I thought that system was fine. I, th- I had no problems with that. And I thought that, you know, the idea that, you you know, you see it in MMOs a lot, you know, and you saw it in Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. You eat food and it makes you better and you get stronger. You get some kind of buff. And it makes sense because you're, you know, if you, in real life, if you eat health, healthier. So, uh, <laughs> we, uh, people are, are chiming in from the chat. So, hi, everyone. Um, hi. So, hey. Since we're interactive, right? That's what it is. I'm sorry. I was looking at my notepad and I couldn't acknowledge them. Um, people are watching from Germany. How about that? That's wow. cool. Um, we're we're international, is what we are. Um, right. So, um, anyways, we. Uh, I think that you know, if you eat better, what put better food in your system and you're going to do better as a whole. I think that makes sense. You know, if I eat, you know, greasy cheeseburgers all the time, I'm going to feel awful, even though I'll feel awesome after eating them. Um, you know, while I'm eating them at least. Um, but you know, if you eat something good, you know, then you're going to get a buff of some sort and that's fine. That's, that's, that's a fine idea and that's fine to be introduced in, in a realistic type of, uh, type of game where we're kind of promoting realism and also the experience idea um, the only thing I disliked about it was the fact that it, it completely eliminated power leveling. So I don't know if you guys enjoyed doing that with your Final Fantasies, but I'm sorry. I loved I loved bursting the bosses grind. at level. Yeah, power grind. Like, come on. And and so like it would make things very difficult because you know at nighttime if you're I think it was under beneath level 15 those iron giants come out. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, you're finished. Yeah. Game over. So no, the uh, one uh, you make a good point here though. You can become incredibly OP at uh you can become incredibly OP just by doing all the side quests. I mean yep. like there yep. there I didn't do it, but there there were people that were t- telling me they're like, I'm on chapter three and I'm level sixty three right now. And That's it's like what I'm Jesus saying. Christ. It's, it's crazy. Like, it's like it's like, God damn, you know, and I, they obviously have more focus than I do um, because I'm just like just get through this, you know. Let's let's just just get me through the game. Um, no, it's it's a uh, it's it's a fun. It, it, it I I think that the game can be as easy as you make it, you know, and, mm, and that's that's that. But that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that because if you put in the effort to get strong early on, then you should reap the yeah. benefits. I think that that's I think that that's perfectly viable. Um, what do you think? Oh, sorry. What do you think, Jack? Um, well, yeah, kind of the same thing, and I and I think um, you know, kind of like what Hulk was just saying about if you put in the effort up front, that's very similar to the older Final Fantasies. If you sat right yeah. outside the starting village and and grinded forever, then you earned that level fifty before you went to the first dungeon. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. The the point uh, you were making about the realism with the food, I totally agree. The sleeping thing, however, I went the, kind of the opposite way. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm not going to sleep for two weeks just so I can go to the Times 2 hotel. Pretty <laughs> yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and oh my gosh, Ignis, yes, it's probably safe to stop driving at night. Tom-tom, <laughs> yes, I know, you want to stop and sleep. Yeah. We're not doing any of that. Shut up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I always um, loved when you went to go drive and he'd grab your arm. He's like, eh, dangerous yes. to drive at night. You know, it's right. like... <laughs> It's like okay, you know, Jesus. <laughs> That's our difference between bravery and foolishness. It sh- oh, yeah, okay, I got it, I got it. Well, we're doing this anyway. <laughs> so Relax, just, get, just get on board. We're yeah. doing it. Just, just get in um, the car. Just get in the car, Ignis. <laughs> Jesus. Or stay here yeah. at this point. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, I don't care. I'll go do this. Just give me Gladio. Um, he has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so that part was interesting and and playing at the beginning of the game i was kind of that same way where oh you know i went across one of the the iron giants at level 10 and got completely destroyed so i'm like yo hey i'm not gonna be out at night i get it but once i figured it out and i started Mm -hmm. to find these different you know times one and a half two times experience i'm like wait a second yeah maybe i maybe i play it this way 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, it was kind of a mixed bag for me, I guess, but it was okay. I it could makes, deal with it. It makes sense. Very realistic. We can settle it on that. That's for yeah. sure. They they sure. tried to make it a uh, and and I guess it's kind of a break in the game in a sense too. So it's okay. I don't know. Ain't like a cottage, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just set up the cottage on the save point. No monsters yep. will come here. You know, definitely. Because yep. this is a safe spot. You know, man, did Coleman get their their money for advertising <laughs> though? Jesus. Yes. Oh my. Coleman and cup of noodles. You know, I mean, uh, come wow. on. Wow. You know, to talk about it. I I was like, just I remember one one instance where. I think Ignis was having. It, it was when you he was teaching you how to stir. Because because Noctis has never stirred anything in his life, evidently. Um, sure. Royalty. Jesus. Royalty. Yeah, was, he's probably was, never dressed himself. Yeah, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like I was like counting on screen like how many Coleman logos there were. There were like five. I was like, so holy neat. crap. I was like, and like you said, cup of noodles. When Gladio mentions it, it's like, dude, the size that you are, you're not eating cup of noodles. You're eating like half, half, half a hen house, okay, to, <laughs> yeah. to maintain that, 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 that muscle count. It's like, yes. dude, come on, you know. Yeah. Uh, um. So soundtrack. Uh, oh, amazing. I love I love this soundtrack. This is this is a soundtrack that I could listen to. This is this is one of the greats. Um, I this feel is, that this is a uh, this is tremendous. I I put it on the radio, and I just think that that it's it is so good, and I can't believe. Well, I can you know, and and we you mentioned this a while back, Scott, because occasionally I listen to our old podcasts to kind of figure out what we've said so that we aren't you know. Contradicting repeating ourselves or, contradicting oh, yeah contradicting ourselves you know people go oh you, you you said this and stuff like that and it's like you know we uh yoko uh shimura uh yep and we were concerned because she was a part of uh what was it kingdom hearts, hearts and stuff like that yeah, but i felt like this was just tremendous this soundtrack oh is, is awesome it's not it's not we can all say it's not nobu but this is yeah very, this is amazing you know, this was I. I have no problem with putting on Final Fantasy 15 soundtrack and just letting it play all day long. Yeah, but I'll be grading this week, grading people's finals, and that's what I'll be listening to. You know, so that's a. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think we need to. I mean, do we need discussion on this? Do hey, we, hey, for the record, yep. what was your? If you guys have gone that deep in it, what was your favorite? I want to say song track from the the whole collection it's okay it's okay if it's i don't good. have a favorite i don't I, I don't i don't think i'd have a favorite because it's very uh it's very atmospheric um mm, which is definitely. which is one of those things where it's like you know with with every game i can say you know i i you know when i say final fantasy 6 terrorist theme there you go uh yep when i say final fantasy 7 uh i say what do I say? Ares theme? Avalanche, Avalanche theme, maybe? Uh, okay. I don't know. For me, I you know, yeah. everybody's yeah, gonna, you know, people are gonna say, "Oh, one week danger, you ass hat," you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, no. It's like, no. How I'm could not. you even mention yeah. anything else? How could you ever? <laughs> how could you ever not love Sephiroth? He is the best. He is, uh, you know, people will they'll all come out of the woods for this one. Um, sure. But you know, Final Fantasy uh, Nine, Loss of Me, uh, or Rose mm-hmm. of May, or whatever, you know, same thing. Whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, I think that, you know, but this one really doesn't have it, this one feels way more atmospheric than than uh, than others. Whereas I'm there are with other albums, I will go next, you know, but yeah. with this one, I'll just leave it on, you know, which is very impressive for what it is. Um, I think that that's what do you think? Yeah, what do you think, Jack? I struggled initially really? with the the soundtrack. Um, I was, and and you said atmospheric, and that and that's a that's a good word for it. Um, a lot of the the themes as you're exploring, but I was I was kind of disappointed. I was, you know, I'm running through this gorgeous place, and I don't hear anything. I hear mm-hmm. uh, birds mm-hmm. chirping or or wildlife, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh man, I really miss like an overworld theme that goes through it and you do have like when you go into a dungeon you'll have that 
yeah. you know, that that, that kind of plane and everything. And I was like, uh and I and I sort of had almost written the soundtrack off. Like I was like, ah, well, can't all be can't all be yeah. Nobu. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> Jack, you need to listen to Wanderlust. Oh, I, 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 I have. At this point, I've gone through the whole thing. And what made me do it was the Chocobo theme. Oh, my goodness. As you're right, you know, I always listen to the, the Chocobo themes in all the games, and they're all, you know, essentially the same melody and everything. I'm listening to this one, and I go, oh, my gosh. When they hit the fiddle, I'm like, this is Chocobo went down to Georgia. Yep. <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, okay, no, 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 I'm back in. Let me yep. let me reevaluate this. I think and that... since then, I've listened to the whole thing, and, yeah, it's it's – pretty good i think that's probably one of the better things of the game i think that for for people like me because like you know i like you know i i own the world of warcraft soundtracks and everything because i'm Egypt. a very very much uh very much atmospheric person i love i love having that music playing just throughout so for me this is a great out for for me this is a great soundtrack this is uh this was definitely one that i'm i'm not like i gotta spend money for this you know um <sighs> No, I'm I'm very pleased with it, and I'm I'm glad that so, I'm glad that somebody else had had kind of an initial different take because I, I think that you know if we look at like in Breath of the Wild, I think you have a similar thing where you're running through. The open world and, the sound is kind of, the soundtrack is kind of meh, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, but it's when you start listening to it and start going through it is when you're just like, oh, this this is really good. I really enjoy this. So. Yeah, good point, though. You know, it's... Going back to your point, you know, it can be another character in a game, but at what point does this character mer- does this character really uh, really take shape? So maybe that's kind of a weird weird part of the game, but, uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, so, um, I guess we kind of, we kind of move on to kind of the end, because we're... we're we're getting ready to wrap this thing up uh, because we're, we're getting towards an hour now, so we don't want to make it too long. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, what do we think? What, 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 and I'm going to circle back to what I said earlier, but what do you guys think about this game overall? Let's start with you, Jack. I, I thought it was okay. Um... It's not the worst Final Fantasy I've ever played. Um, it's n- definitely not the best. And it gets better when I put on the lens of this was never supposed to be a main installment. This was this versus, versus. 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it was always going to be kind of this weird thing because they could be weird, right? They were allowed to be weird because it was not a main series. And then it became one. And putting on that lens, I think it's it, it it looks better in my eyes. Yep. But trying to just compare it to you know the rest of the main series, pretending none of that happened, and it's middle of the road. Yep. Not the worst. Definitely not the best. Yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah, Scott. All right, uh, I'll just go through this quick. Um... <laughs> Environmental wise, I feel like everything around you was just eye candy. The characters' personalities were pretty weak, but they do develop over time, which kind of compensates for the weak characters in general. Um, combat system's okay. Um, don't know if you guys talked about it, but when you hit a monster from behind, it's a blind side attack, so it's 1.5 yes. times damage. Yeah. So, like, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff is cool. I don't mind that. Um, at times, I felt like holding the X button was just like a Kingdom Hearts game. Just keep, you know, hitting the monster. Just repetitive, repetition, repetition. Um, music is what probably captivated me the most out of the game. Uh, why I brought it up originally is just because when you see that f- battle between um, Ifrit, it's like the Ramos form or whatever, and he fights uh, Sky Bahamut, you get that epic 11-minute Hellfire uh Battle OST, so yeah. I don't know. It's just it, it really captivated me in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it, overall, I mean, I just it was kind of a make it or break it for the series. The way I see it is like they sold I think eight hundred thousand units altogether now to this day to this current uh, year. So it's like they haven't hit the mill. Like a million hasn't been sold out of copies. It kind of seems like their Square Enix is just backpedaling at this point in time. 
And, and like you guys said originally, this was just a side series, more or less. So, I mean, we're diehard fans. We literally live, eat, breathe, grew up on Final Fantasy. And it, it, it kind of feels like they kind of they, they kind of mutated a, a new child, you know what I mean by that? So, I don't know. That's that's my over, overall thoughts. I mean, I still show love to the company. I'm still a Square Enix fan. But I, I have to really take the time to investigate Final Fantasy 16 and so forth. Just because I'm just not impressed anymore. I, I, I don't know. I, I will I will say this just to throw this last thing on there that I, you know, since I've been kind of trashing the game. I did genuinely have fun with this game. Yeah, like I had fun exploring. I had fun doing the the side quests. I, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there were times driving in the car, right, mm-hmm. going somewhere. I I had fun, so I did enjoy it. I'm just trying to look at it, you know, I guess from a critic's eye and and yeah. comparing it to the rest of it. But did genuinely have fun with the game. Yeah, I think that I think that it, it's something different to look at it from you know. T- because every game I play, I don't tear apart like I do with certain games. You know, Final Fantasy games, I, I hold to a different standard than a lot of other games. Um, Same. You know, if I run into a game that is pleasant and it's surprisingly pleasant, that's that's awesome. This mm-hmm. one, I go, it's... I had fun playing it. I'll play it again. Um, I just don't know if I needed to know the story. Like, I, I, I come back to that. This is not a story that was worth telling, in my opinion. Like you said, this was supposed to be a side thing. You know, this was supposed to be 13 verses or verse, whatever the hell the title was. Um, yeah, something like that. But, it was, <laughs> but it, was, it was put off, put off, put off, and then it became an enumerated title. And so now you have Final Fantasy XV, and this is, this is what it is. And mm. I don't know if that was completely warranted they made now the amount of effort that they put into this yeah it had to be an enumerated title they made a, that retro game the the movie the you know the pinball game inside the game. Yeah, just yes. just just marketing 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 and they put everything into this so it's like yeah this is this is a num this is a uh, this is 15 and i think that they they took from what they did with 13 and because in the beginning 13's a hallway um, you know, and come down the hallway, and I think with the, they were like, we're not going to do that, um, and they didn't, and they they gave you an open world. I'm just not sure it was the greatest type of story to be told. Um, you know, because I've I've heard this story a million times. Oh, there's an empire, and they're bad, and they're they're using technology, and and they're. I've never heard of that before. Um, you know, for for old Final Fantasy fans like us, it's like, okay, that's a retread, and now we get to be... But now we're royalty. Oh, great. You know, um, that that's fine. I just... I'm just a little bit like... Eh. You know, yeah, I... Exactly. I nah. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's... It's a middling Final Fantasy, I feel like. I the the soundtrack may be the most the th- the best thing that I take from it. Um, I'll get some more play out of it, but there will be there will come a time where I go onto the shelf, right? You know, hey, like, you should, and, you should, and then it, you shouldn't let it go like that. Yeah. What do you think about the DLC? Come on, a glad, I'm so glad you always just that's going to be a mini a mini. Uh, Mini, mini podcast pod series. Mini, mini podcast series. <laughs> Don't give it up. Don't give it away yet. Um, so there's a lot of things. You know, Square Enix released their earnings and they're doing very well um, for the past year. I think they they had a, a an incredibly good year. I just don't know if this is a. I don't think that this is a sixty dollar game. Um, I don't. But but for what they put into it, you have to put sixty dollars on it. You know. Um, and I understand that. Uh, just like I don't think I am Setsuna is a forty dollar game, uh, but I feel I feel that. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you know, which it, don't get me wrong, I love I am Setsuna, but it's it's overpriced. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not long enough for for that price price number, uh, price point. But uh, 
I think that there's a lot of other titles that are kind of getting, you know, there's some Dragon Quest love happening. Um, there's, I just. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Do you think the game should have been overall sixty dollars? I, I don't know. I guess if where it is, I I'm okay with it just for the amount of. Just for me personally, the amount of time that I put into all the side quests and everything, I I get easily distracted. So <laughs> I, I I moved uh, through the storyline at a snail's pace, I think, and spent a lot of the time just doing side quests and was having a blast doing that. So for me, I think it was fine where it was. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, just like I I think that know. I think that if I had picked this up for thirty five dollars. I would have been way more excited yeah, than same. I am for it, for spending the full amount on it. Um, or even even just, you know, I don't know, getting it for 40, 45, 45, I'll, I'd, be, I'd be excited. I, I just don't know if I'm like, yay, that was totally all the money's worth. I just, I, you know, especially since I got the steel case, so I spent more than sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah. So on a on a movie, I I just wanted the artwork. God, I sure. am such a jerk. Um, anyways, <laughs> no, the uh, would have helped if they added multiplayer or something. You know, I I think that I think that this is an okay game. I I don't want to beat it into the ground. I just don't think I'm. I don't think I'm as I don't think I'm in love with it. Um. I, I think I that it's it's just uh, it will it will get hung up and then it'll just be there for you know and I the DLC I mean we'll we'll talk about that when we uh, when we talk about that right mm-hmm. so um, with that let's let's wrap this up um, so Final Fantasy XV uh, by Square Enix uh, this has been a Limit Break podcast episode seven. Um, we're getting back to this. Uh, we're going to be trying to make this bi-weekly now. So, uh, we will be coming up. I think that our, what was our next episode? Was it going to be on 12? No, no, it wasn't going to be on 12. I think we're going to be talking about the DLC, uh, coming Maybe up. So, so I yeah. think that's our next one. So, uh, and with 12 coming out soon and everything, you know, the, the, the re-release of 12, not re-release. But, well, is it a re-release? Zodiac Age. Zodiac Age. That's right. So, um, and I know Scott is so pumped about Zodiac Age. So, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about that soon. Uh, we'll talk about the DLC when we come, come back around. But, uh, anyways, Scott. All Jack, the best. Take care, guys. Take care, guys. It's been fun. All right. Yeah, All right. definitely. See ya.